Do fats cause insulin resistance? Now that sounds like a crazy question, but if you've heard it from plant-based doctors, if you've heard it from people from the vegan movement, that's what they're saying. They're saying fats are the reason that insulin resistance and type two diabetes occurs and it's not coming from carbs or sugar. So if you're getting confused on this whole thing and you've been hearing this so many times that it's fats that are the problem, you're gonna wanna stay tuned for the rest of this video. Hey, what's up everyone? Eric Bowling here. Look, in today's video, we are going to go into this topic about fats causing insulin resistance. You hear it from plant-based doctors, you hear it from vegan doctors. Why are they saying this? The thing you have to understand is that a lot of plant-based doctors, a lot of vegan doctors, they're using studies that are correlation, not causation. The other problem is they're not accounting for the fact that people who are consuming these high fat diets are also consuming high carbohydrates. Now this is important because if you're consuming a high fat diet such as the keto diet, and then you hear something such as fats cause insulin resistance, then you're probably freaking out. And I don't want you to freak out because there's a lot of science and there's a lot of research on the health benefits of doing a short-term keto diet. So what all the research shows right now is that the problem is when you consume fats and carbs in excess, which is pretty much the standard American diet. Let's talk about why this is such a big problem because if you look at energy, the body has two fuel sources, carbohydrates, okay, so glucose, or fats or ketones. Now the body can definitely use protein as a fuel source, but it's not going to. Obviously the body wants glucose as its preferred fuel source. This is something that's not debated. So even though I love keto, even though I give keto to people, you have to understand the body prefers glucose. Now I said this before, if you don't believe me, get into keto, become fat adapted, and then go and drink a Gatorade. What happens? More than likely, you're kicked out of keto. Why? Because the body has evolved to run on glucose. You'll hear this so many times from people who advocate keto that fats are the preferred fuel source. Heck, even I've said it a few times before, but here's what you have to understand is that fats were the preferred fuel source tens of thousands of years ago before the introduction of carbohydrates. But once carbohydrates came on the scene, you have to understand that the body said glucose is a much more efficient fuel source. It's quicker, it's less demanding on the body, and we can utilize it better. So now that we kind of understand that the body prefers glucose, your body has a lot of different mechanisms put in place to find and break down things to use as an energy source. So if fats aren't present and carbs aren't present, guess what? Your body's gonna break down amino acids, so your muscle tissue, and it's going to convert it back into glucose. The body has a lot of different ways to get fuel. Now, it doesn't mean that just because the body can run on fats or just because the body can run on protein, it doesn't mean that that's efficient. And the thing that you have to understand is that there's a huge difference between adapting and optimizing. Now, this is a big topic, and I'm gonna make a huge video on this later in the weeks. So I suggest that you subscribe and hit that bell icon so you can get notified when these videos do drop. The problem is if you're running off of carbohydrates, so you're eating, let's say, 30 to 50% of your caloric intake from carbs, but you're also eating really high fats, the body's going to say, hey, carbohydrates are now my fuel source. So I don't need fats in excess. I only need such a little amount, about 0.3 to 0.5 grams per pound of body weight to use it for building cell membranes and helping with your hormone production. Other than that, anything over what the body needs, it's going straight into fat storage. Now the same thing is true with keto. Let's say you're eating super high fats, you've become keto adapted, but somehow you also run into the habit of going three or four days keto, and then on the weekends or Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you just binge out on carbs. Well, guess where those carbs are going to go? they're gonna go straight to fat. So no matter which way you look at it, you have to understand the problem is not fats in and of themselves. And if we flip it to the other side, sugar and carbohydrates are not the problem in and of themselves. And I talked about this in my last video or a couple videos ago, which you can watch here, 
that you can't demonize foods. You can't demonize specific nutrients. Everything needs to have a specific context. So for the overweight, obese individual who's chronically addicted to sugar, guess what, they probably shouldn't be having a diet high in sugar. The other thing to understand is that yes, if you're consuming carbohydrates as your main energy source and you're also consuming fats in excess, then your problem may be fats. Now you're starting to understand why nutrition is such a confusing topic. And it's really because both sides, the people who advocate keto diets, the people who advocate plant-based diets, they're not meeting in the middle and being a generalist and saying, it depends. And so if you find yourself confused, I want to help you because a confused mind says no. A confused mind throws its hands up and says, well, neither party can figure this shit out. So I'm just going to go back to doing a moderation diet and eat everything in moderation, which is the worst thing that you can do. You need to choose which side you want to be on. Not that one side is superior than the other, but based on your lifestyle, based on adherence factors, based on what you can realistically do and what you're willing to commit to, choose what you want. If you love veggies, if you love carbohydrates and they make you feel good, maybe follow a higher carbohydrate, lower fat diet. If you love keto and you feel great on keto, go for a higher fat, lower to no carb diet. You need to decide what works best for you. The main problem with all this, and I don't wanna to get too deep into the science and quote a bunch of literature today, but what I do wanna tell you is that the main problem is people theorize too much. They spend all day on Google, they spend all day on PubMed, researching everything, watching YouTube, watching different people's videos from different doctors, and they get so confused and they try nothing at all. Well, here's what you have to understand. If you're not trying anything, then you have no idea what is actually going to work for you. So I'm going to give you the simplest diet ever. Now, this isn't an individual thing, but it will work for about 70% of the population. It's so simple, you can fit it on a post-it note. If you're not lifting, I want you to have 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. If you are lifting, at least three to four times a week, I want you to have two grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. So now that we got that done, now let's go into the carbohydrates or the fats. I want you to choose your fuel source. It doesn't matter if you choose carbs, it doesn't matter if you choose fats, you just have to understand if you choose one, the other one has to be very low or non-existent. So you have to decide what you wanna use as your fuel source. If carbohydrates just make you sleepy, you're always bloated, you have a lot of food sensitivities, maybe you wanna try higher fats, lower carbs. So the second part, if you're gonna go with carbs, going to be about 50% of your caloric intake. Okay, so we're gonna come back to this because I'll show you how to get your caloric intake. So now for your fats, I want you to do one gram per kilogram of body weight. If you're running on fats for fuel, I want you to do 50 to 60% of your caloric intake coming from fats and carbohydrates, less than 50 grams in total a day, primarily coming from vegetables. So now that we got that, here's our two post-it notes. It fits on two post-it notes. The only thing we need that's left are our calories. So for fat loss, I'd like to do your body weight in pounds times 10. And then if your goal is to gain weight, I like to do 15 to 17. So when we look at it, this is what it looks like, okay? Depending on what your goal is. This is so simple, you can fit it on a post-it note. Now you're probably asking, well, what food should I choose? Do I need to go organic? Don't worry about that right now. I want you to just start because people get so confused and they watch so many videos of so-and-so says this, but the other person says this, and I don't know what to do. And you just it's just comment wars of, Fats cause diabetes, no, sugar causes diabetes, and it's just a never ending war and you're sitting on the other end throwing your hands up. So when you hear a plant-based doctor or someone from a, the vegan movement who says fats are the enemy, you have to just laugh in your head and say, well, it depends. Yeah, they're the enemy if a person's consuming mass amounts of carbs and mass amounts of fat. In and of themselves, no. Fats do not cause insulin resistance. So you have nothing to worry about depending on what you're doing. 
Going back to the very first meta-analysis of all the diets and all the different things out there, you have to understand that the conclusion is that as long as caloric intake is matched, protein is accounted for, and depending on what type of fuel source a person uses, when you put all diets side by side and all those things are accounted for, there's not much of a difference across the board. So hopefully that clears a lot of things up. Look, if you like this video, make sure that you click the like button, make sure that you subscribe, and as always, if you have any questions, anything you're still confused about, put it in the comments below and I'll make sure to answer you. And until then, I will see you guys next week.